tell me about yourself and your background in IoT. Hi, my name is Vera Sell. I'm the VP of Marketing at Senrio. Early in my career, I started in product management and new product development for emerging technologies. Uh, first at an analog system on chip company, integrating wireless ICs into consumer devices. Mm. Then I did um, product management, working with several development teams on distributed technologies, um, as well as network technologies. I didn't know it at the time, but I was at the heart of IoT development, even though we didn't call it that. Now at Sanrio, I'm really focused at raising awareness for the huge technology debt the security industry and manufacturers have amassed for IoT security. So my interest is both uh, professional, but also as a consumer and global citizen, I'm curious what will happen once we connect a billion devices. The security industry really hasn't done a very good job at protecting our computers and servers, and now we think it's a good idea to connect really insecure devices at a massive scale. So what do you think then, I mean, on that track, what, we haven't done a great job in the IT world. We're now about to go in the IoT world. What do you see the differences between IT security and IoT security? Yeah, IoT is a fabulous term. It means nothing and everything. <laughs> so it, it really was developed to encompass this new idea that you have um, embedded devices which are not new, but now they're connected. And IoT usually means the device, the backend infrastructure, the data, the analytics. But for this purpose, let's just talk about the endpoint or the edge device. What's really different about embedded devices is that they have these technical characteristics that have huge security implications. So for one, they're swap constrained. Mm. So you have the size, weight, and power constraint that make an on-device agent really impractical. Mm -hmm. You also don't have this homogeneity of operating systems that you have in traditional endpoints. Right. The second thing is firmware insecurity, really. There's a great quote that says, um, firmware is the NSA's best friend, and it's a cesspool of insecurity. It's, um, and it's really true. Uh, we carry around these devices, and they, they're very easy to, to hack. And if you want an example, you can actually look at the Senrio blog, where we had a group of interns um, look at a couple of very interesting devices. The third thing is the UI. Okay. With a computer, or you usually have this screen, this interface that gives the user some intimacy and tips them off when something is wrong. With embedded devices, you just don't have that. Right, right. Well, I mean, since we're talking about embedded devices and firmware, why don't you, let, let's focus on, on that. And can you give us three, what are your top three tips for firmware security? Right, so at Sanrio, we actually come from a reverse engineering services and training background. So we have three tips for manufacturers to make firmware more secure. The first thing is really look at your debugging interfaces. Mm. They're a perfect ingress point for mm. an attacker. Like JTAG, one, for example? Per, exactly. J, JTAG is one of the most popular debugging interfaces, and almost every device on the market ships with one. So once an attacker has access through JTAG, they can compromise the firmware and then actually uh, create remote exploits. To, to launch onto your targets. So they can open up the they can open up Correct. the physical device, plug in their own JTAG uh, connector into the connector on the board, mm -hmm. and you're saying access it that way? Correct. So um, again, we have a brilliant blog post on JTAG as well. So even some manufacturers try to hide the JTAG interfaces, but uh, a skilled attacker can actually reverse engineer these pin out, pinouts and still get access. Mm -hmm. Then that actually brings me to my second point, protect your bootloaders. Okay. Again, if an attacker get, gets access to the firmware, they, they own the device. They can bypass all other sophisticated security measures doing right. that. And the third thing really is implement continuous monitoring, both on the device and the firmware level. Okay. Uh, you don't know, so their manufacturers are now doing spot checks, vulnerability checks, and we think that's really valuable. We have trained a lot of security teams at Fortune 500 companies, and that's a the correct right next mm -hmm. step. Mm -hmm. However, even after the device ships out of the factory, you need to be watching what they're doing. All right, so that, that leads us to intrusion detection systems, or maybe it's a different terminology, but why don't you talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that? And you know, we understand it in the IT world, but how does it work in the o IoT world? Right, so the intrusion detection with traditional endpoints really rely on signatures. But that's not really the attack vector that we see on IoT devices. So you don't use necessarily shell scripts, but as I talked on firmware, the, the attacker might misuse or abuse the device 
and that wouldn't be detected by a traditional um, intrusion detection system. Right, right. So what you really want is a monitoring system that is designed from the ground up for IoT devices and mm -hmm. give you visibility into what the devices are doing um, as well as into what their firmware is doing. So how are you getting visibility into what they're doing? Right, so at Sanrio, um, the founders, actually, as I mentioned, come from a reverse engineering background. And what happened is they would look at these devices um, under the service contracts, both for consumer, medical, as well as energy devices. And they would see the same attack vectors over and mm. over again. And they would get asked at the end of each engagement, what do we do about it? So you're like, well, some custom firewall rule sets, you can do this, this, and the other. But there wasn't a scalable, uh, prescriptive, comprehensive solution for IoT. And that's when they founded Senrio. And so what Senrio does, it's a, uh, it has several components. It has an on-prem sensor, which passively monitors the network traffic. So these device characteristics that I spoke to you about that make it very difficult to monitor with traditional solutions, we actually use to our advantage. Because with these devices, you don't have a user in the loop, and they do very specific things. They're application specific. So you can create this shrink-wrapped profile, mm. and when the devices step out of that, you know that something's wrong. And when, what we do in Sanrio is we passively monitor them, and when we provide an alert, it's both useful for the operations team, uh, the IT team, as well as the security team. So you're saying you put an agent where in the network, and I'm going to ask you specifically in an IoT network, you've got the IT network and you've got the mm -hmm. OT network, right, which is working in different types of protocols. So where are you placing these agents and is it across the whole fog layer or mm -hmm. is it just specifically in the IT side? Well, that's really interesting. So we're really network agnostic in that sense. So um, it's a software solution mm -hmm. that sits on the network and connects to the span port of a router or switch. So the operator can decide which layer of the network they really want to watch. We see a lot of micro-segmentation um, addressing kind of the, this, this problem. Micro-segmentation is great, but it doesn't scale. Right. But even if you have separate networks, you want to know what, whether the policies are enforced and how do you do that. Yeah. So we allow network operators to put the Sanrio sensor where they need them and then we process that information in the, uh, in the cloud and provide actionable insights through the UI. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's important to be able to see what the traffic is, but what are you looking at? What is it that you're looking at in the traffic? Though? Right, so there, we only look at the metadata, and that's really important. Okay. So some solutions um, do deep packed inspections, and we don't believe that is going to be scalable or applicable, mm -hmm. especially because of privacy concerns. So if you have applications in healthcare or retail where you have HIPAA and PCI compliance requirements, you just don't want to be looking at the traffic. So we figured out a way to just look at the metadata, at where the devices are connecting, what they're doing. Um, an example would be uh, a network security uh, or um, earthquake sensor that's only supposed to check into certain updates, and then it gets a firmware update out of schedule, right? You definitely want to be looking into the, these kinds of behaviors. Okay. And what is the metadata that you're looking at then? So that's proprietary information. We look at nine different vectors. Okay. In what? In at what layer then? Is it? It must be at. It must be at the networking layer. Or Correct. We look at the networking layer and, and DNS traffic. Okay. So source port, um, destination port, source IP, and then there are some other uh, secret sauce vectors. Secret sauce. Well, what can people find out more about your company? Right, I would recommend starting with the blog.senrio. We okay. provide a wealth of information both for developers as well as uh, manufacturers and network managers. And um, if you're interested in learning more, feel free to reach out to us. All right, thank you.